Wind and solar power are promoted for being renewable and green, but because producers can't control when the sun shines or the wind blows, those alternative energy sources haven't been able to perform when needed at peak times. A Vancouver company has a solution, green energy storage using vanadium flow batteries. I talked earlier to Bill Radback. He's the president and CEO of American Vanadium and asked him to start with what vanadium is. Vanadium is a metal uh, probably really discovered only you know, 150 years ago. Uh, the first use actually was by Henry Ford in the Model T. It was one of the big keys. Um, he was actually uh, in France at a car show, a car rally, and a car crashed, and he went by, and it actually stood up extremely well uh, considering the, the force of the impact. And he found out this very light metal contained vanadium. So he was actually uh, introduced it in the Model T as, as one of the components that made it a nice light vehicle. So where people see it today, though, is it's in probably every piece of rebar and structural steel in America. 0.05% uh, content vanadium increases the strength of steel by 50, 100%. So that allows you to have 30% you know, less steel in your building, yet maintain the structural integrity. So that's, that's basically the, the widest use of uh, vanadium. And your company has found a deposit of this, uh, but you don't intend to, I mean, I suppose that's a market that you'll, you'll obviously sell into the steel market, but it's batteries that you're focusing on. Is that right? Right. Um, our project's in Nevada. It's, it's the U.S.'s only vanadium deposit on the horizon. And so we finished a feasibility study a couple of years ago based on that classical use. But uh, it's a very, um, very rare deposit. It's a sedimentary deposit. It allows us to use sulfuric acid heap leach, which is a low-cost method. But most vanadium comes from as a byproduct in iron ore mining, so it's a very dirty product and has to go into steel. Uh, can't go into specialty products. Uh, because of our geology, we can produce a very high quality product uh, at very low cost. And what's unique is these new vanadium flow batteries, which were you know, invented 25 years ago, but now they're just being commercialized. And these aren't you know, car batteries or cell phone batteries. These are you know, megawatt size, the size of a shipping container. Um, and you can store mass amounts of energy for up to hours. And, and that's really, be uh, people have been expecting and hoping the vanadium flow batteries are going to be the leader. Um, and now it's real. And so, uh, what's unique about these batteries, too, is half of the cost of these multi-million dollar batteries is a vanadium. So you need a tremendous amount, and that's where we can play a role. And obviously, storage of electricity, storage of batteries is sort of the holy grail of the whole industry. Uh, when you say you have the technology, it's ready to go? It's ready to be commercially available as, uh, as soon as you get your project going? Yeah. I mean, my sort of my personal history is mining, and actually I did a biotech, and I did learn not to get involved in R&D again. <laughs> uh, what we did was actually go around the world uh, about 18 months ago. I decided, let's, let's shift this around. If we're going to actually sell the vanadium into the battery industry, we have to help create it in the United States. So we went to the battery technology leaders around the world and settled on one. We did a, uh, entered into a relationship with Gildemeister of Germany, who's the only one that's you know, successfully commercialized these. So they've been selling these batteries outside of North America uh, for the last couple of years, so over 50 installations, so very reliable you know, true German engineer batteries. The problem is they can't grow to that, you know, 100, 200, 500 megawatts capacity per year of production without a good supply. And we really are globally the only, you know, reasonable cost, stable priced uh, source of high quality vanadium mm -hmm. outside of China. Now, your Nevada project needs uh, approvals. I understand there's a public comment period op open to the end of May. Any yeah. concern at all uh, from where you sit that it won't go ahead? Um, you know, we're really excited. The, uh, I mean, that's just part of the typical BLM process, Bureau yeah. of Land Management, we're on federal land. Um, we're getting exceptional support from the local community and even the BLM, uh, the regulatory bodies. Uh, they understand the value of this deposit um, in the batteries and the need for it in America because everybody's talking storage now. Um, but also, we've, uh, as part of our submission, we're going to power probably 60 to 80 percent of our mine using uh, solar and vanadium flow battery. So it's actually going to be a green mine. So we're getting a tremendous amount of support. So we're actually going through the process very quickly. Now, my understanding is that this is a part of a shale deposit. We, we think of shale as now uh, plentiful because of drilling techniques that have unlocked shale gas and uh, forms of oil. Uh, could there be more vanadium elsewhere if it is in shale? Uh, you know, it has occurred uh, in shale in different areas. We've got a very unique deposit. You know, the good thing about Nevada is just very old uh, exposed uh, uh, rock. So this is very oxidized. Uh, basically, we're moving a, a small mountain. Uh, the strip ratio is 0.2, and actually, you know, as prices go up, it's pretty much essentially all ore. 
and we just put it on a heat, uh, heat bleach pad. So it is very unique, and it's not just, you know, shale is unique, but this heavy oxidized uh, ore body is, you know, we think, you know, globally unique. And is it safe to say that this is a Vancouver-based company with a Nevada property because of the Canadian sort of expertise in putting together this kind of financing because we're a market that knows how to do these things? Yeah, I mean, this, this was a project. It was um, owned by Union Carbide and Aranda and Atlas in the past, uh, a number of other small companies, but a group of uh, you know, Vancouver uh, mining uh, people put together a shell or a company based on this and IPO'd on this project in about 2006. You know, it had its ups and downs since then. I joined about three years ago to move it forward. Um, but it really is our unique experience at moving, mm -hmm. you know, these kind of early stage projects, being very uh, imaginative and creative in how to get there and, and get the value out of it. Um, and then finding this, you know, unique sulfuric acid heat bleach uh, method to really drop our operating costs uh, was a real trigger as well. All right. Well, we will be watching with interest, Bill. We appreciate you joining us to fill us in. Thank you. Bill Radback is President and CEO of American Vanadium.